So in the last video we saw Chomsky's argument that really we should, when we're doing the study of language, we should think of ourselves as trying to characterize I languages. And Chomsky said a bit about what I languages are, but in this section we're going to see how he says a little bit more about what I languages are, namely by attacking an alternative way of thinking about I languages. So we sort of face a choice at this point. We have this idea of I language. And it's got something to do with the brain. It's some sort of state of the brain that's produced by being exposed to language when you're a child. It's involved in saying sentences. It's involved in understanding sentences when they're, when they're said to you. But there's at least two different ways to think about what's going on in that kind of brain state. So one way to think about it is that, well, when you're in this brain state, what that really is, is just to have a certain kind of ability. An ability to speak, produce, and understand utterances of a language. That's one way of thinking about what this I language might be. We said it's a high-level brain state. What particular high-level brain state? You might think, well, just a, a, an ability to speak or something like that. That's the, the conception Chomsky's going to be arguing against. The alternative way, which he is more uh, in favor of, is that really this brain state is a, a state of something pretty much like knowledge. Something like knowledge of language rules. I have to be a little bit cautious here because Chomsky sort of goes back on this later on. But for now, we can basically just think of him as saying that I like the, the state of the brain that is an I language, that's a state of knowledge. It's a state of knowing something or other about the language that you speak. So Chomsky is going to be arguing primarily against this ability-based conception in favor of the knowledge conception. Now, the people he has, he's attacking here, he talks about philosophers like Michael Dummett and Anthony Kenny. They were not necessarily thinking about language in the, in the e-language, i-language distinction way that Chomsky gives us. But when you're already thinking about things in terms of i-languages, this is a natural question. Should we think about it as an ability or should we think about it as knowledge? And Chomsky has a, a very interesting argument here to say that we really have to think about it in terms of knowledge and not in terms of ability. And Chomsky's argument here is actually really pretty simple. So he says, well, imagine that you develop Parkinson's or something like that, with the consequence that you're no longer able to speak. You're not able to produce utterances of English. Maybe you're not allowed, you're not able to sign either, you're not able to sign words of English, and you're not able to write words of English. So you just don't have any, any way at all of producing English utterances. And just to really make your case completely tragic, let's suppose that you've gone deaf and blind as well. So that means that not only can you not produce any utterances, you can't sort of take them in either. You can't hear anybody when they speak to you. You can't see anybody when they write things down. You have no way of either producing an utterance or taking an utterance in, in any way. Now Chomsky asks us to think about, well, how would we describe what's going on in this situation? Would we say this is a situation where have you, you have lost your language, where you don't have your linguistic competence anymore? Or is it rather a situation where you're just not able to sort of put that linguistic competence to work? And Chomsky thinks, actually, it's, it's really the, the latter. He thinks in a situation like this, we don't want to say that you've lost the ability to understand a language. Rather, you've just sort of lost the opportunity to put that to put that to work, to put your competence to work. In some sense, even though you can't hear them, or you can't see them, or you can't say them in any way, you can still understand English. You still understand English when you're in, in this kind of state of being unable to hear or, or say things. It's just that the fact that you understand English is kind of of no use to you in the situation when, whenever your perception is messed up in this way. Chomsky also tries to push the argument a little bit further by asking, how would we describe it if you sort of recovered your ability to speak? So imagine that you were administered a drug which cured your Parkinson's, which also cured your deafness and which cured your blindness. So basically you're in the, in the state that you were before you developed your illness. How would we describe that situation? Would we say that that's a situation in which you relearned English, where you relearned a language, where you, re, you regained your linguistic competence? Or would we say it's a case where you regained the ability to do something that you knew how to do all along? And Chomsky wants to say it's the latter. 
Because if you think about your knowledge of English, your knowledge of English is totally unaffected by any of this process. It was unaffected by developing Parkinson's and deafness and blindness, and the knowledge is also unaffected by redeveloping your sight and your, and your ability to speak and things like that. There's some sort of knowledge that you had that was consistent throughout the whole thing. And for this reason, it seems like we don't want to say you relearned English. You knew English all along, it's just you couldn't put that knowledge to work in any way. To try and understand the basic point here a bit better, it might be helpful to see that, as Chomsky says, this kind of thought experiment seems to suggest there's a difference between knowing how to do something and being able to do that kind of thing. So Chomsky gives the, this kind of case. So imagine you're somebody who's able to cycle a bike, and then you develop some kind of brain injury that affects your motor skills. So you're not able to pedal the bike anymore, maybe you're not able to keep yourself up, Maybe your balance is all out of whack, so you're not able to cycle the bike anymore. Is that a situation where you don't know how to right cycle the bike anymore? Chomsky wants to say, no, it's just a situation where you're not able to put that know-how to work. It's true you're not able to cycle the bike anymore, but nothing is wrong with your knowledge. Like, you, everything you knew about how to ride a bike, you still know. It's just you can't put that to work. And Chomsky wants to say, this is really just the exact same kind of way we should think about the language case and the, in the, in, and the Parkinson's case. Just as the cyclist retains their knowledge of how to cycle, even when they have this brain injury that affects their motor skills, you retain language in the Parkinson's case. You retain your knowledge of language. You retain your linguistic competence, even if you're not able to put it to work because you have motor problems with speaking and you have perceptual problems with taking utterances in. And just like in the case of know-how, Chomsky thinks that this shows that the state of being in an I language is crucially one that involves something like knowledge. This kind of this kind of picture rather than this kind of picture. Now, as Chomsky says, there are some things that the ability person can say. They might try to say, well, in, say in the Parkinson's case, knowledge of language is a special kind of ability. So maybe we retain the, the ability all along. But Chomsky's challenge to this view basically is like well, if you want to say in the Parkinson's case that in some, le in some sense you were able to speak English and some sense you were able to understand English all along, we want to really be given some way of defining ability where it doesn't just amount to what Chomsky is talking about in the first place. It doesn't just amount to knowledge. And Chomsky thinks this basically can't be done. But the only way to truly say that you're able to speak and you're able to understand English throughout the Parkinson's case, both before and after you get the drug which cures your illness, it's just going to turn out that that ability really is knowledge in the end, and so that Chomsky's view is going to be right. So in this video we asked the question of, well, let, what, supposing eye language is a brain state, what kind of brain state is it? And the two answers we considered were, well, it might be a certain kind of ability, the brain state might be one that is, makes it the case that you have a certain kind of ability, or we could think about that brain state as a certain kind of knowledge state. And we saw that Chomsky wants to argue for the latter. And he wants to argue for the latter because he thinks that whatever linguistic competence is, whatever having an eye language is, it's something that's preserved even when you lose the ability to speak, even when you lose the ability to hear and understand sentences. And that, he thinks, shows it must in fact be a state of knowledge and not an ability.